Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala Spanish. We are in the paper entitled Advanced Spanish Grammar. I am Kaurav Kumar and I teach Spanish in the center of Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and Latin American studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. We are in the module titled The Present Subjunctive 4. In this module, we are going to learn the uses of the present subjunctive in the dependent adjective clauses conjunctions of time, conjunctions of purpose, and other conjunctions. Let us start with the first case of the indefinite antecedent. The subjunctive is used in relative clauses when the antecedent is indefinite. If the antecedent is definite, the indicative is used. Let us take an example. Conoce usted a alguien que hable español? I repeat. Conoce usted a alguien que hable español? Which in English means, Do you know anybody? Who speaks Spanish? Let us take another example. Necesito un profesor que me explique las matemáticas. I repeat. Necesito un profesor que me explique las matemáticas. In English, the translation is, I need a professor who can explain mathematics to me. Let us take one more example to understand the concept of the unknown antecedent. Busco un apartamento que sea grande y barato. I repeat, busco un apartamento que sea grande y barato. In the English form, it is, I am looking for an apartment that is big and cheap. Till now, we saw certain affirmative sentences where the antecedent was not certain. Now, let us take some examples in the negative form. No hay nadie que lo sepa. I repeat. No hay nadie que lo sepa. In English, the translation is There is no one who knows it. Let us take another example. No hay ninguna profesión que pague bien. I repeat. No hay ninguna profesión que pague bien. The English version is There is no profession that pays well. The subjunctive is used with the negative expressions as the statement is considered to be an unrealistic exaggeration. In case the antecedent is known, then indicative is used. Let us see some examples in the form of the following sentences. Conozco 
a una secretaria que sabe español. I repeat, conozco a una secretaria que sabe español. I know a secretary who knows Spanish. In this case, the concerned person is known to me. That is why I use the indicative in the dependent clause. Let us take some more examples where the indicative is used. Tengo un apartamento que es grande y bonito. I repeat, tengo un apartamento que es grande y bonito. I have a big and beautiful apartment. Once again here, we use the indicator. Let us take some further sample sentences where we will use the subjunctive. Conozco a un matador que siempre reciba una oreja. I repeat, conozco a un matador que siempre reciba una oreja. I know a bullfighter who always receives the bull's ear. It is of cultural importance to know that bullfighting was an extensively loved game in the past and still continues to be carried out in few parts of Spain and also South America. The game in itself is very interesting where the bullfighter puts his life at stake before death in the form of the raging bull. At the end of the game, if people love the performance of the bullfighter, then he is awarded with the bull's ears and it is a great mark of respect earned by the bullfighter. Let us go further and see other examples where the subjunctive is to be used. El no tiene nada que sea de mucho valor. I repeat, el no tiene nada que sea de mucho valor. In English, the translation is, he has nothing that is expensive. Next example will be, Quiero comprar una casa que tenga cuatro baños. I repeat, Quiero comprar una casa que tenga cuatro baños. The equivalent translation in English is, I want to buy a house that has four bathrooms. Let us take another example. Tengo un puesto que me pague muy bien. I repeat. Tengo un puesto que me pague muy bien. In English, the version is I have a designation or post that pays me well. Let us take another example. No hay nada que le asuste a aquel niño. I repeat. No hay nada que le asuste a aquel niño. In English, the translation is There is nothing that can scare that kid. Let us take another example. 
No conozco a nadie que me acompañe a la playa. I repeat, no conozco a nadie que me acompañe a la playa. In English, the translation is, I don't know anyone who can accompany me to the beach. Next example is, Ella busca un novio que sea inteligente y guapo. I repeat, Ella busca un novio que sea inteligente y guapo. In English, She is searching for a boyfriend who is intelligent and handsome. Let us see another example. No tengo una falda que vaya bien con esta blusa. I repeat. No tengo una falda que vaya bien con esta blusa. In English, the equivalent is I don't have any skirt that may go well with this top. Next example is Busco un taxi que esté libre. I repeat Busco un taxi que esté libre. In English, the sentence is I am searching for a free taxi. Next example is No hay ningún restaurante aquí que sirva comida española. I repeat No hay ningún restaurante aquí que sirva comida española. The English version is There isn't any restaurant here that serves Spanish food. Coming to the next set for the usage of the subjunctive, we find the conjunctions of time. The subjunctive is used with adverbial conjunctions of time when the verb of the main clause is in the future since you cannot say if the action of the adverbial clause will actually take place. However, when the verb is in the past, then indicative is used since the action has already been realized. Common adverbial conjunctions of time are Cuando Hasta que En cuanto Tan pronto como Mientras Siempre que Antes de que Después de que I repeat Common adverbial conjunctions of time are Cuando Hasta que En cuanto Tan pronto como Mientras, siempre que, antes de que, and después de que. Let us now consider the next set of usages of the subjunctive. That is, the conjunctions of time. The subjunctive is used with adverbial conjunctions of time when the verb of the main clause is in the future since you cannot say if the action of the adverbial clause will actually take place however when the verb is in the past then indicative is used since the action has already been realized Common adverbial conjunctions of time are Cuando Hasta que En cuanto 
tan pronto como mientras siempre que antes de que después de que i repeat common adverbial conjunctions of time are cuando hasta que en cuanto tan pronto como mientras siempre que antes de que después de que the subjunctive is used after the above mentioned conjunctions only if the main clause has a different subject than the dependent clause let us see this in the case of a sentence el practica yoga antes de jugar al fútbol i repeat el practica yoga antes de jugar al fútbol in spanish he practices yoga before playing football in the above sentence there is only one single subject for both the verbs practicar and jugar hence you cannot use the subjunctive in the dependent clause in this particular case therefore one has to use the indicative in this case in the following sentences there are two subjects joined by the conjunction voy a esperar hasta que tú vengas i repeat voy a esperar hasta que tú vengas in english the translation is i am going to wait until you come as you can see that the subject for the verb in the main clause voy is yo and in the dependent clause it is tu let us see another example hasta que no termine mi discurso in the following sentences there are two subjects joined by the conjunction let us see some examples and how the different subjects are acting in these sentences voy a esperar hasta que tú vengas i repeat voy a esperar hasta que tú vengas i am going to wait until you come in this sentence voy has the subject yo and the second verb venir is conjugated in the subjunctive because of the time conjunction hasta que and the subject for venir is tu which is different from the subject of voy which is yo that is why the subjunctive is possible in this case let us take some more examples with the subjunctive hasta que no termine mi discurso no se le permite salir a ningún alumno i repeat hasta que no termine mi discurso no se le permite salir a ningún alumno the equivalent translation in english is until my talk finishes no student is allowed to leave en cuanto llegues llámame en cuanto llegues llámame in english as soon as you reach call me the conjunction of time en cuanto requires the use of the subjunctive 
in the verb jagar. Let us see further examples. Mis padres volverán antes de que tú salgas. I repeat, mis padres volverán antes de que tú salgas. The English equivalent for this Spanish sentence is, my parents will return before you leave. In this case also, for the verb volver, the subject is mis padres. And for the second verb salir, conjugated in the subjunctive, the subject is tu. Next example is, iremos al mercado cuando papa vuelva a casa. I repeat, iremos al mercado cuando papá vuelva a casa. In English, the equivalent translation is, we will go to the market when papa returns home. So you see that the first half has iremos with nosotros as the subject, whereas volver in the subjunctive has papa as the subject. Next example is intentare acabarlo tan pronto como pueda. I repeat, intentare acabarlo tan pronto como pueda. In English, the version is, I will try to finish as soon as I can. Next example is, Después de que termine el trabajo, me iré a casa. I repeat, Después de que termine el trabajo, me iré a casa. After the work finishes, I will go home. The next conjunction of time is that of mientras, which means while. Let us see how it functions with the subjunctive. Mientras esté enferma, la niña no podrá ir al colegio. I repeat, mientras esté enferma, la niña no podrá ir al colegio. The English equivalent is, while the child is sick, she cannot go to school. Let us take another example. Vamos a viajar a París cuando tengamos dinero. I repeat, vamos a viajar a París cuando tengamos dinero. The English version is, we are going to travel to Paris when we have money. Let us take one more example. Siempre que enseñes, enseña a la vez a dudar de lo que enseñas. I repeat. Siempre que enseñes, enseña a la vez a dudar de lo que enseñas. In English, it is whenever you teach, teach at the same time to doubt what you are teaching. These are the famous lines of Jose Ortega y Gasset. Be careful while using the above conjunctions as they also frequently take up the indicative. 
when the statement is about a completed action or about a general or habitual occurrence. Let us see some examples. Cuando hace frío, los niños juegan en la nieve. I repeat, cuando hace frío, los niños juegan en la nieve. In English, when it is cold, the children play in the snow. As you can see, that this sentence is stating something which is a habitual action. Therefore, we have to use the indicative and the subjunctive cannot be used in this case. Next example is Hasta que no lo vieron, no lo creyeron. I repeat, Hasta que no lo vieron, no lo creyeron. In English, until they did not see it, they did not believe it. Let us see some more examples. Hasta que no lo vieron, no lo creyeron. I repeat, hasta que no lo vieron, no lo creyeron. Until they saw it, they did not believe it. Here again, we find that after hasta que, the verb where is in the past. Therefore, because the creyeron part is going to be in the indicator as well, as the whole action is talking about events in the past. Now let us take another example. Siempre que voy a Barcelona, visito el Catedral de Montserrat. I repeat, Siempre que voy a Barcelona, visito el Catedral de Montserrat. In English, the translation is, Every time I go to Barcelona, I visit the Montserrat Cathedral. Here again, it is a regular activity which is being stated. Hence, the subjunctive is going to be avoided and the indicator is used to express the event. Another example is Después de que terminaron el trabajo, Se fueron a tomar unas copas en el bar. I repeat. Después de que terminaron el trabajo, se fueron a tomar unas copas en el bar. In English, the translation is, After finishing work, they went for drinks in a bar. Let us take another example. Él intentó evitarme cuando me vio bajando del coche. I repeat. Él intentó evitarme cuando me vio bajando del coche. The English equivalent is He tried to avoid me when he saw me getting down from the car. Another example is, Mientras que trabajo en el ordenador, también escucho música. I repeat, Mientras que trabajo en el ordenador, también escucho música. In English, the translation is, While I work on the computer, I also listen to music. In this sentence, you can see that two actions are happening at the same point of time. One is that of working on the computer and the other is listening to music. 
that is why both are expressed in the indicator with the conjunction of time while mientras ke let us see the next example en cuanto llegaron a la india fueron a visitar a taj mahal i repeat en cuanto llegaron a la india fueron a visitar a taj mahal in english the translation is as soon as they arrived in india they went to visit the taj mahal the action is talking about events in the past and hence the indicative has been used the conjunction of time antes de que always takes up the subjunctive whether in the present or in the past let us see some examples ellos saldrán antes de que lleguemos i repeat ellos saldrán antes de que lleguemos in english the translation is they will leave before we arrive here the present subjunctive has been used let us see the next sentence where the past subjunctive is taken care of ellos salieron antes de que llegáramos ellos salieron antes de que llegáramos in english they left before we arrived here llegáramos is the past subjunctive form another example él va a vender su coche antes de que sus padres vuelvan a casa i repeat él va a vender su coche antes de que sus padres vuelvan a casa he is going to sell the car before his parents return fueron de vacaciones antes de que terminara el semestre i repeat fueron de vacaciones antes de que terminara el semestre they went on vacations before the semester end Juanito va a estar contento cuando aprenda a conducir el coche. I repeat. Juanito va a estar contento cuando aprenda a conducir el coche. In English, the equivalent is Little John will be happy when he learns to drive a car. Another example is Los abuelos van a descansar después de que los niños se vayan. I repeat. Los abuelos van a descansar después de que los niños se vayan. In English, the translation is The grandparents are going to rest after the kids leave. Let us take another example. No podré salir mientras que llueva. I repeat. No podré salir mientras que llueva. In English, the version is I will not be able to go out while it is raining. Let us take another example. Cuando yo vaya al extranjero, te compraré un perfume. I repeat. Cuando yo vaya al extranjero, te compraré un perfume. The English equivalent is, when I will go abroad, I will buy you a perfume. Next example is, no me muevas de aquí hasta que no te lo diga. I repeat. No me muevas de aquí 
hasta que no te lo diga. The English equivalent is don't move me from here until I ask you to. Let us see another example. ¿Qué hará cuando se les pierda el tren? I repeat. ¿Qué harán cuando se les pierda el tren? In English, what will they do when they miss the train? Coming to the next set of usages of the subjunctive with the conjunctions of purpose. The following conjunctions of purpose normally take the subjunctive in the dependent clause. De manera que, de modo que, para que, a fin de que, I repeat, de manera que, de modo que, para que, a fin de que. Let us see some examples of sentences with these conjunctions of purpose. El profesor lo explicará de manera que todos lo entiendan. I repeat. El profesor lo explicará de manera que todos lo entiendan. In English, the version is The professor will explain it so that everyone understands. Text sentences Pinta la placa de rojo de modo que se vea bien. I repeat. Pinta la placa de rojo de modo que se vea bien. In English, the version is Paint the board red so that one can see it well. Let us take another example. Lo hago en secreto de modo que ellos no se enteren. I repeat. Lo hago en secreto de modo que ellos no se enteren. The English version is I do it secretly so that they don't come to know about it. Next example is Hay que darle tiempo para que se acostumbre al nuevo ambiente. I repeat. Hay que darle tiempo para que se acostumbre al nuevo ambiente. The English version is One must give him time to get used to the new ambience. Next sentence is Riega las plantas a fin de que crezcan las flores. I repeat. Riega las plantas a fin de que crezcan las flores. The English version is He waters the plants so that the flowers grow. Let us take another example. Hazlo de modo que todos puedan verlo claramente. I repeat. Hazlo de modo que todos puedan verlo claramente. In English, do it in a way that everybody can see it clearly. Let us come to the next usages of the subjunctive with other conjunctions such as sin que, con tal de que, en caso de que, a menos que, a pesar de que. I repeat, sin que, con tal de que, en caso de que, a menos que, a pesar de que. Let us see the usages of these conjunctions in some sentences. Lo podré hacer sin que nadie me ayude. I repeat, lo podré hacer sin que nadie me ayude. The English version is, 
I will be able to do it without anybody helping me. Next example is Mi padre me comprará una nueva moto con tal de que saque buenas notas. I repeat, Mi padre me comprará una nueva moto con tal de que saque buenas notas. The English version, My father will buy me a new bike provided that I score good grades. Next example is, ¿Qué hacemos en caso de que nos ataquen? I repeat, ¿Qué hacemos en caso de que nos ataquen? The English version, What do we do in case they attack us? Let us take another example. No voy de compras a menos que tú me acompañes. I repeat, no voy de compras a menos que tú me acompañes. The English version is, I am not going shopping unless you accompany me. Next sentence is, a pesar de que él lo sepa, no me lo dirá. I repeat, a pesar de que él lo sepa, no me lo dirá. The English version, in spite of knowing it, he will not tell it to me. Next example is, ellos no vendrán a menos que estés tú en casa. I repeat, ellos no vendrán a menos que estés tú en casa. The English equivalent is, they will not come unless you are at home. One more example is, él hablará con tal de que no sea por más de media hora. Él hablará con tal de que no sea por más de media hora. In English, he will give the talk given that it is not for more than half an hour. Another example is, Él me prestará dinero a pesar de que no tenga mucho. I repeat, Él me prestará dinero a pesar de que no tenga mucho. In English, despite not having much, he will lend me money. Let us see one more example. Yo les mando dinero a fin de que vivan mejor. I repeat, yo les mando dinero a fin de que vivan mejor. In English, I send them money so that they can live better. Further examples, el ejemplo ilustrado es para que los demás lo sigan. El ejemplo ilustrado es para que los demás lo sigan. The example is shown so that the others follow it. Vamos a entrar en el cine sin que nos vean. I repeat. Vamos a entrar en el cine sin que nos vean. In English, we are going to enter the hall without anyone noticing us. Compraré comida en caso de que nosotros vayamos a acampar. I repeat, compraré comida en caso de que nosotros Vayamos a acampar. I shall buy food in case we go for camping. Pondré el pastel en la nevera de manera que se enfríe. I repeat. Pondré el pastel en la nevera de manera que se enfríe. I'll put the cake in the fridge so that it gets cold. A pesar de que llueva, tendré que ir a recoger los documentos de la oficina. 
a pesar de que llueva, tendré que ir a recoger los documentos de la oficina. En inglés, despite the rain, I will have to go to pick the documents from the office. En caso de que haya alguna urgencia, llama directamente a la policía. En caso de que haya alguna urgencia, llama directamente a la policía. En In inglés, in case there is an emergency, call directly to the police. Next example is, let us see one more example. La niña no te va a dejar entrar en la casa a menos que le compres su juguete favorito. I repeat, la niña no te va a dejar entrar en casa a menos que le compres su juguete favorito. In English, the little girl will not let you enter the house unless you buy her her favorite toy. Spanish subjunctive with conjunctions is an interesting and important topic and will serve you well in your journey of the Spanish language. Please do revise the usages and practice them with as many exercises as possible. Thank you. Gracias.